How's it going folks? My name is Daniel. Welcome to my channel where I'm celebrating all kinds of movies and today is a complete collection Blu-ray video. I'm going to be talking about my complete collection of the Kino Lorber Studio Classics Blu-rays that I have purchased. I really love Kino Lorber because they are a company that's feels like they're rescuing movies. They kind of take movies that a lot of people probably wouldn't care about and they are giving them good transfers, maybe putting a few special features on there and selling them for really great prices. I have over 70 of these Kino Lorber Blu-rays. The count is around there. Um, they're pretty easy to pick up because of great sales that the company does. So I'm going to be going through every single one and talking about every single one. I like those collection videos where people actually tell you why they bought the movies, what they like about them and, uh, and have them all stacked up and, and you get to see the process of just going through the stack. I, I enjoy that. So I hope you do too. So let's just jump right into it. Okay. So first movie up is Get Crazy. Um, this is a comedy from the 80s, 1983. And what a way to start. I've never actually seen this movie, but I've heard it's a good time. Don't have many of these slip covered Kino Lorbers, but I've got a few of them. Next up, I actually have this one over here. Uh, this is Deep Rising, which is a horror action blockbuster uh, directed by Stephen Summers, who made The Mummy. And it's got giant sea monsters that attack a cruise ship and the remaining survivors have to fight them. It's got Treat Williams and Thomka Jansen giving really great performances. I don't think it's an incredible movie, but it's a good time. It's fun stuff. Uh, next up, Two Mules for Sister Sarah, a Clint Eastwood Western. Now, I went through kind of a Clint Eastwood phase earlier this year. Where I watched a bunch of his Westerns I'd never seen. This is one of them. Definitely one of his least dark and gritty Westerns. Um, and it has a twist in there that <laughs> is fine. Not the greatest thing I've seen in the world. Uh, but it's him and Shirley MacLaine. I think it's pretty fun. I enjoy it. Next up is Alias Nick Beale. This is with Ray Milland, and it is a noir film from 1949, and it's kind of a mix of noir and horror. Um, Nick Beale, played by Ray Milland, might not be entirely human. There might be some really creepy supernatural stuff going on here. Uh, so it's an interesting morality tale and kind of spooky for a noir. I really like it a lot. Uh, and Inspector Calls. I've never seen this movie. It's a 1954 noir. I'm pretty sure it's a noir film. Probably about an inspector, I'm guessing. I've heard really good things. I, if I recall correctly, I got it for a good deal on eBay. Uh, next up, The Annihilators. Action movie from 1985. Kind of a low-budget action movie. Kind of an urban panic <laughs> kind of movie where uh, this the, these ex-military guys sort of come into this neighborhood where gangs have taken over and are terrorizing people. There's some like 80s horror practical level violence in this movie that I think is pretty fun. I really enjoy The Annihilators. If you're looking for a quote unquote cheesy action movie, I think it's I think it's pretty great. Uh, the Art of Love. This is a 1960 sex comedy uh, with an amazing cast, which is why I bought it. You got James Gardner, Dick Van Dyke, Elkie Summer, who I'm less familiar with, and Angie Dickinson. And it's pretty dumb. But if you like 1960s sex comedies, there's definitely some fun to be had. Uh, it's basically where Dick Van Dyke is like a, he's an artist and like fakes his own death to make more money selling art. And James Gardner's making a lot of dough off of this. It's pretty fun. Uh, Avenging Force. I really like this action movie. It's a canon movie starring Michael Dudikoff and Steve James. They're the team that starred in American Ninja, another canon action movie I love. And uh, this one's probably a little bit smarter, probably a little bit of a better plot than that movie, but uh, I really enjoy it. It's technically a sequel to Invasion USA with Chuck Norris. Okay, I've never seen this one. The Aviator. I bought it because it's, it's kind of like a historical blockbuster adventure kind of movie from 1985 starring Christopher Reeve some from Superman. So if that sounded up my alley, but I haven't watched it yet. Oh, this one's still wrapped. The Bank Dick, which is a W.C. Fields movie. He was a comedian back in the 30s, at least in, or 40s too. This is 1940. And uh, I've only seen one of his movies, which was It's a Gift. And I didn't like It's a Gift. So, oh no, I've seen one other I don't remember what it was called, though. But I've seen a couple. I don't know how I feel about him yet, but I'm going to check out the bank dick. See what I think. Uh, Black Sabbath, Mario Bava anthology horror movie. Three horror stories in this one. All really good. Drop of Water is definitely the best of them, though. So I highly recommend that one. Bluebeard's Eighth Wife. This is a Ernst Lubitsch movie. I love Ernst Lubitsch romantic comedies. He made a lot of rom-coms between the 20s and the 40s. Um, he died a little bit too young in the 1940s. But this is starring Claudette Colbert and Gary Cooper. Not one of the best Ernst Lubitsch movies I've seen, but charming. A good time. I like it. 
uh, Broken Arrow, Jimmy Stewart Western. If you saw Avatar and you thought, well, that's just derivative of Dances with Wolves. Well, if you go back in time further, Dances with Wolves is kind of derivative of Broken Arrow. So it's all a cycle, folks. We sing, we dance, we steal things. That's what artists do. Um, I'm ripping off a Jason Mraz album title right there. Uh, this is a, a movie about Jimmy Stewart as a cowboy who... Um, makes good friends with the Native American tribe and the conflict that goes along with that. I really like this movie. It's directed by Delmar Daves, who made a lot of great Westerns. It has a romance in there that's pretty weird. Hasn't aged great, but uh, it's a really good movie. Next up, Cannon for Cordoba, a George Pappard Western. I believe it's a spaghetti Western, a Western made in Italy. I've never seen it yet, but I kind of like George Pappard. I've seen at least one movie from him fairly recently and enjoyed it. So I want to check that out. The Cat and the Canary. This is a great horror comedy from 1939 starring Bob Hope. Um, it's one of those classic, a bunch of people have to stay the night at a creepy old mansion because someone's going to get an inheritance and we don't know who's going to get it. It's also Paulette Goddard, who was married to Charlie Chaplin for a little while. She was such a charismatic movie star in her time. So, so good. Uh, I, I love this. If you're looking for a horror comedy, uh, you can't go wrong with that one. Uh, still in the plastic, this is The Crimson Cult. It's a 1970s horror movie, 1968 actually, with Boris Karloff and Christopher Lee. It's a tie gun movie, I think. Oh, it's AIP technically. No, and tie gun. Okay, it is a tie gun movie. Uh, so there's Hammer, there's Amicus, and then there's tie gun. They all kind of go together. In my experience so far, I don't love tie gun. Uh, they're, they've got a couple of great stuff, but the, the track record has not been great for me. So we'll see about that one. I'm not sure about it yet. Oh, The Day the Earth Caught Fire, a 1961 science fiction film. Feels a lot like a 50s sci-fi movie, but because it's a little bit later, um, I think it's got a little bit more going on in the script, a little bit more social commentary to it. It's about how the sun is getting a little too close to Earth, and it's heating up uh, the planet until pretty soon everybody's going to die. So it's a very apocalyptic movie about we're probably going to die soon. Uh, so it's really dark, but really, really great and really interesting. Directed by Val Guest. That's a, that was a great Kino discovery. Uh, a lot of these movies I blind buy because I go into these Kino Lorber sales and uh, the movies are so cheap. They're like $8, $10, $12. And, uh, and I just pick up a lot of things I've never seen and come along with a, come away with a lot of heavy hitters. So... The Earth Dies Screaming, not quite a heavy hitter, but I got it because it's a 1950s sci-fi movie, 1964. I, I got to stop assuming these decades. Uh, directed by Terrence Fisher, who was the premier director of Hammer Films, directed Curse of Frankenstein, Horror of Dracula. This is nowhere near that good, but it's a pretty fun Invasion of the Body Snatchers riff. I think it's decent. So I, I, I held on to that one. Didn't sell it off. Enter the Ninja, another canon action movie. I like these canon action movies. I like action with cheese. That might be my favorite kind of action movie. Um, you know, there's some good, like, really serious, grounded action films, to be sure. But I do love some 80s cheese. And uh, Enter the Ninja has a lot of it. Franco Nero as a ninja with a mustache and a dad bod. Good stuff. Um, a Fistful of Dynamite. This is a Sergio Leone Western I've never seen. I think it's his only Western I still haven't watched yet. But it's got James Coburn, right? Yeah, yeah. And Ron Steiger uh, from 1971. Really long. Looks like it's about two and a half hours. But with Sergio Leone, it's pretty much always worth it. So The Ghost Breakers. This uh, was released uh, from Kino Lorber at the same time as they put out The Cat and Canary. Because it's another Bob Hope horror comedy. I like it. Don't love it near as much as Cat in the Canary. So um, this one's a little bit more ghosty. Uh, so if you want some ghosts rather than just some murder and intrigue, you might go Ghost Breakers. But I just think Cat in the Canary is a way better movie. Uh, Hangover Square. I haven't finished this movie yet. I started it, got interrupted, but it's a classic noir film. I got to finish it because it, it was good and I've heard great things about it. Okay, one of my favorite discoveries of the year. When I went through my Clint Eastwood kick, checking out a bunch of Clint Eastwood movies I'd never seen, this was the standout for me. Little bit of a mix of Western and horror. Definitely a pure Western film, but some weird psychedelic stuff going on. And uh, Clint Eastwood, it's like he's maybe the devil. He's not the devil. He's he's something supernatural. But um, he kind of turns a Western town into literal almost literal hell. He even like puts up a sign, welcome to hell. It's insanely dark, but I loved it. I love that movie. Uh, the Hitchhiker. This is a classic noir film directed by Ida Lupino. Really like Ida Lupino as an actor. And other than On Dangerous Ground, which he kind of co-directed uh, with um, Nicholas Ray, I haven't seen her directorial work. So I picked this up so I could see that, but I haven't watched it yet. 
It's only 71 minutes, so I kind of have no excuse. The House on Carroll Street. Um, I got this movie because it was really cheap. It's a period piece mystery, I think, uh, from the 90, 1988. There I go again, assuming decades. Uh, starring Kelly McGillis and Jeff Daniels. Um, I thought it looked good, but I've never been in the mood to watch it. So we'll see if that happens. I Wake Up Screaming, one of my favorite noir films, a really early one from 1941. And um, it's just like a there. a lot of the story is told in flashback. It's just about who killed this girl. There's this great murder mystery. Our main character kind of gets framed for it. It's I think I heard it's Betty Grable's only serious movie, non-comedy, non-musical. I, I love it. I think it's great. I Walk Alone. I talked about this in my top 10 noir films video. One of my favorite noirs of all time. I think it's amazing. Burt Lancaster, Kirk Douglas. So good. Uh, the Ice Harvest. This is a pretty cool Christmas movie. Actually, it's it's a really dark um, crime film, but it does take place at Christmas time. It's directed by Harold Ramis, R.I.P., um, starring John Cusack, Billy Bob Thornton, and Connie Nielsen. I think it's a pretty good time. Not one I watch every Christmas, but I do like it. I'm going to get you, sucker, a black exploitation film from 1988. Still haven't seen it. Got to check it out. Uh, Invitation to a Gunfighter, a Western from 1964. I believe this was in their going out of print sale and it was super, super cheap. Um, so that's why I picked it up. It's starring Yul Brynner, uh, directed by Richard Wilson. I've heard good things. I need to watch it. Jungle Fever, a Spike Lee film. I haven't seen near enough Spike Lee films. I need to watch more. And this one, I thought it had an intriguing premise. It's starring Wesley Snipes, who I love. He's such a great, charismatic movie star. Um, he's still good now. I hope that he gets to still make movies. Maybe he'll be in the upcoming MCU Blade movie. I, I don't know. Maybe a cameo. But um, Jungle Fever, I need to watch that. Still got the plastic on it. Uh, Lifeboat. This is a Hitchcock movie. I thought it was okay. Um, a lot of people love this one. Not one of my favorite Hitchcocks. It's all one location on a lifeboat shot with a green screen. So there's not a lot of reality to it. It feels like a play. Oh, next up, uh, we've got Love Me Tonight. This is not an Ernst Lubitsch movie, but I heard it was very much like an Ernst Lubitsch movie. And that's definitely true because it's starring Maurice Chevier, who made a lot of movies with Ernst Lubitsch. If you've seen the Disney Beauty and the Beast, which I'm sure you have, Maurice Chavier is the template for Lumiere the Candlestick. He is Lumiere the Candlestick in human form, which feels goofy and dated, but I don't mind. <laughs> I like old movies, I think, uh, and I, I like this one. It's not as good as the Nurse Lubitsch movie, for sure, but um, I did enjoy it, for sure. Uh, one of my favorite discoveries, Love with the Proper Stranger, starring Steve McQueen and Natalie Wood. It's an incredible romantic drama. Not very long. It's only 100 minutes, only an hour 40. And um, it's tackling some pretty dark and deep subject matter. I thought it handled it really well, especially for coming out in the 60s. And Steve McQueen and Natalie Wood are two of my favorite movie stars of all time. They are incredible. Such good chemistry, such good charisma. I, this is one of my top recommendations from this whole video, honestly. I, I just love that film. Malice. This is a really fun, trashy, erotic thriller from the 90s. Um, it is, let's see, it was directed by Harold Becker, but it was written by Aaron Sorkin. And it's starring uh, Bill Pullman, Nicole Kidman, and Alec Baldwin. I was remembering without looking at it. And um, just a trashy thriller that's actually really well done. I really like it. Uh, the Man Who Could Cheat Death, Terrence Fisher, Hammer Film. Uh, this has got Christopher Lee, Hazel Court, and some guy named Anton Differing. Uh, not a not a, a staple in Hammer Films, but um, it's a pretty good Hammer movie. Not super monstrous, not a lot of horror. Feels a little bit more like a play, but I do like it. Uh, it's just not one, not a top tier Hammer by any means. Man of the West, one of my favorite Westerns of all time. Uh, it's starring Gary Cooper, but more importantly, it is directed by Anthony Mann, one of my favorite Western directors of all time. He made a lot of movies with Jimmy Stewart, like Man from Laramie, The Naked Spur, um, uh, just a lot, a lot of, really, oh, um, gosh, what is that movie called? Bend of the River. A lot of great movies, but uh, this is one of his best. This is the Western that got me into 50s Westerns. I kind of had an idea of 50s Westerns like a lot of people do, that they're more boring, more squeaky clean. This was a long time ago. Um, and I watched this movie. It's so deep and dark and brutal and just kind of nasty. I was really impressed by that. And I've come to find a lot more Westerns are like this than are like Roy Rogers, especially from the 50s. 
So we got the Mark of Zorro, classic swashbuckler. Cannot go wrong with Tyrone Power as Zorro. It's definitely not as good for me as the Antonio, Antonio Banderas movie from Martin Campbell. Um, that's one of the probably top three swashbucklers ever made. This isn't quite that good, but it is a classic, a staple of swashbuckler cinema, which I love and I do recommend it. Uh, then I got a couple of box sets down here. Cary Grant box set. I actually talked about this in a haul video about a year ago and still have not watched any of the movies. So I need to get on that. Um, a lot of, uh, several obscure movies, but I'm always down for a Cary Grant comedy. Then I've got the Western Collection. I've actually watched a couple of these. Have not watched Whispering Smith with Alan Ladd, AKA the Shane guy. Uh, but I did see... The Virginian with Joel McRae, which is a solid 1940s Western. 1940s Westerns are a little different than 50s Westerns. 50s Westerns are definitely darker. 40s Westerns are a little more squeaky. Um, that's kind of what this is, but certainly not, not a bad movie by any means. I think it's decently entertaining. And When the Daltons Ride with Randolph Scott. This is interesting because if you've seen the Randolph Scott movies uh, directed by Bud Bedeker, you've seen dark, gritty depressed Randolph Scott. Um, this is squeaky clean, young, fresh faced Randolph Scott who has like a, a, an East coast accent, very different than who he would become in later years. But um, it's a totally decent, entertaining Western. None of these movies, well, neither of those movies really blew me away, but um, they're totally fine. Uh, let's go over to this stack over here. So first up we've got Modern Girls, which is an 80s comedy. Uh, it's kind of one of those one crazy night comedies where three girlfriends, they go out to party and have a good time and misadventures happen along the way. It's fun. If you like 80s atmosphere, just those 80s fashions and soundtrack, it's got tons of that. I really, I really enjoy this one. It's fun. Next up, More Dead Than Alive. Really good, interesting Western from 1969. It's got Vincent Price in a supporting role, but it's mainly starring Clint Walker and Anne Francis. It's really, really interesting. I haven't seen it in a few years, but this is actually one of the first Kino Lorbers I ever bought, uh, just in a sale haul randomly, because it had Vincent Price, and I ended up loving it. Navajo Joe, one of my favorite Westerns of all time and has been for a really long time. It's directed by Sergio Corbucci, starring Burt Reynolds as a Native American man who goes out on revenge. This was a big influence on Quentin Tarantino. So if you love Tarantino, this is an absolute must watch. It's dark, gritty, super violent. I love it. And it's from 1967. So pretty early for that much darkness and violence. Okay, we got a double bill right here of The Night Stalker and The Night Strangler. Both starring Darren McGavin, the dad from A Christmas Story, uh, who is a reporter who investigates some spooky goings on like vampires and such. So they're TV horror movies. I believe I saw this first one when I was a kid, or it could have been the TV show Kolchak the Night Stalker, because my dad was a big fan. So I saw something of it when I was a kid. I don't remember it very well, but I picked these up to revisit them as an adult. Haven't done it quite yet, but I'm excited to get to that. Maybe this upcoming October, maybe a little sooner. We'll see. I like watching horror movies all year long. Oh man, one of my favorite Kino discoveries again, Nightmare Beach, which is an 80s slasher film directed by Umberto Lenzi, uh, who made a lot of Italian horror films. And this one feels a little bit less Italian. It, it's pretty convincingly made like it's an American movie, but just so over the top and wild. It's about this biker character with a biker helmet, you can't see his face, who goes out and murders teenagers and young people on the beach during spring break. It's a really fun beach movie, but also good slasher stuff and decently likable characters. For a 1980 slasher movie, I know that genre gets bashed a lot for not having likable characters. I think, I think this one movie works in that regard. The Oblong Box, which is an AIP horror movie, kind of at least based on Edgar Allan Poe, starring Vincent Price and Christopher Lee. And for some bizarre reason, I still haven't watched it. So I can't tell you much about it, but with that kind of pedigree, you gotta check this out. So I'm working on that myself. Uh, One Million Years B.C. is a Hammer movie, a prehistoric movie in which Raquel Welch runs around in skimpy clothing and Harry Housen designed and operated di claymation dinosaurs attack. And it's not a great movie by any means. Not super interesting. But if you like Harry Housen dinosaurs, you're going to get that. It's always good to see a dinosaur movie that's not in the Jurassic Park franchise. Love that franchise, but um, it's nice to see dinosaurs outside of that. Decent movie. 
Uh, oh, okay. One, two, three, directed by Billy Wilder. One of Billy Wilder's uh, comedies, later comedies, 1961. It's got Jimmy Cagney. I need to see that one soon, for sure. I'm sure it's great. I, I think my friend Chris Hurtado is a big fan of it. I've read the Hurtastic Reviews YouTube channel. Uh, the Pit. Okay. Uh, 1981 horror film about a little boy who discovers a pit full of trolls. And he talks to his teddy bear that's maybe an imaginary friend, maybe not. And the teddy bear tells him to kill people by throwing them into the pit. I watched this movie in the middle of the night during an attempted 24-hour marathon of horror movies in October with some friends. And the first half of the movie, we were dying laughing at how utterly ridiculous and terrible this movie is. And then the second half, everyone fell asleep but me. I was the last man standing, and it was almost unbearable to get through because I was so tired, and the badness of it had wore me down so much. So... Do I recommend it? No, but under those circumstances, you could have some laughs. Uh, much better than The Pit, Pitfall, 1940s noir movie, specifically from 1948, starring Dick Powell and Elizabeth Scott, in which Dick Powell is a family man with a house in the suburbs and a great job, who is restless, unsatisfied. He meets Elizabeth Scott and starts to have an affair, and it is the unraveling of his life from there, including a private detective who's obsessively in love, love with Elizabeth Scott and is not going to take it well that she's leaving him for Dick Powell. It's a really interesting, really intense movie. I love it. Uh, the Premature Burial, which is the only one of these Roger Corman, Edgar Allan Poe films that you can't get in the Vincent Price Scream Factory box sets because it's not starring Vincent Price. Oh, wait, that's not true. Tales of Terror isn't in those box sets either. Neither here nor there. Uh, the Premature Burial is really cool. It's starring Ray Moland. I didn't like it the first time I saw it because it didn't have Vincent Price. Now I've completely gotten over that and I recognize it for just a really creepy, dark, death-obsessed, morbid horror film. I actually think it was really cool, so I recommend it. The Quatermass Experiment, which I believe was Hammer's first really big hit. It's also directed by Val Guest. It started a trilogy of Hammer films, the Quatermass movies. I've only seen this movie once. I do think I need to revisit it, but I did like it, and it's got some weird body horror going on. Revenge of the Ninja, the second of Canon's Ninja trilogy after Enter the Ninja, which I talked about a while ago. This one's definitely improvement over Enter the Ninja. It's got better action. Sho Kazugi, who played the villain in the first movie, plays the hero in this movie. Not the same characters. Um, and he's much more capable of a martial arts action star. So if you just want to watch a ninja movie, this is probably one of the more satisfying ones you'll ever find. Next up, Road to Rio. There was a whole series of movies back in the 1940s and maybe a little bit of the 50s uh, in which Bing Crosby and Bob Hope made these musical comedies where they went on a road trip. So they were uh, exotic location type movies, movies you would watch to go pretend that you're taking a vacation to see exotic locale. Uh, you get to watch Bob Hope make some jokes. You get to watch Bing Crosby sing a song. You get to watch some romance. And, uh, and they're kind of movies that are just made to deliver you some simple entertainment. I've seen a few of them. I couldn't tell you right now if I've actually seen Road to Rio, but I've seen a few of the road movies and I picked this one up because it was super cheap and it was recommended to me and I can't remember if I watched it. So that's on me. Um, I know I've seen Road to Morocco. I can tell you that for sure. Oh man, this movie is so good. Running Scared. It's a 1980s cop movie, kind of an action comedy with a really good dose of both those things. And it's starring Billy Crystal and uh, Gregory Hines. And it's kind of one of the most fun buddy cop movies you're ever going to find. It has great banter, great laughs. One thing I like about them is they're not at odds. A lot of times buddy cops have to like butt heads, be opposites until they can make up and learn to work together by the end. These guys are just buds the whole way through. They're just having a good time and I have a good time watching them. So I kind of like that switch up of the formula. Uh, next up, Sam Whiskey. Really, really fun. 1960s Western starring Burt Reynolds and another uh, example of Angie Dickinson. Uh, she's in a few of these movies. It's just a fun Western comedy. It's a heist movie in which instead of stealing something, they have to break in and put a bunch of gold back because uh, Angie Dickinson's husband stole a bunch of gold, passed away, 
Now Angie Dickinson wants to get this gold put back before they discover that uh, it was stolen so that her family name is not tarnished. So it's a really fun switch up of the heist movie. And Burt Reynolds is just one of the coolest guys in the world. Oh, it also has Clint Walker and Ossie Davis. So it's got a great, great cast. Next up, The Skull, one of Amicus's few horror movies that was not an anthology. Uh, it's starring Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. And it is a decent movie when you think about peter cushing and christopher lee together not one of their best collaborations i like most of their hammer movies better than a lot of their amicus movies but i do overall like amicus and i think it's certainly a watchable little horror flick but it's nothing that's going to blow your mind by any means Space Camp, uh, recommended to me by my friend Anthony King, who hosts the Cult Movies podcast. Uh, space Camp is an 80s teen movie in which a bunch of teens go to Space Camp, including um, Leah Thompson from Back to the Future and Kelly Preston, Kate Capshaw. It's got a really, really great cast. Oh, and by the way, uh, Lee Phoenix, who would later change his name to Joaquin Phoenix and later win an Oscar for playing the Joker. He's a little kid in this movie. It's so ridiculous. They go to space camp. They accidentally get launched into space. But the movie actually treats the dumb premise pretty seriously. And I respect that because I was able to suspend my disbelief and be like, you know what? I'm going to buy into this and I'm going to care because they're they're taking it seriously enough to ask me to care. I appreciate that, that it's not just a dumb joke the whole way through. I think it's fun. I really, really like it. Oh, boy. The Specialist, Sergio Corbucci, Spaghetti Western. I love Sergio Corbucci, but I haven't watched this one yet, so I need to check it out. The Spiral Staircase, really good, just mystery thriller. It's from 1946, so it's very early, but it feels kind of like a giallo. It feels very influential on the giallo genre. Um, it is about a deaf woman who re uh, and she lives in a big mansion and they're all talking about the fact that there is a serial killer going around killing women with disabilities so it's got a really dark nasty streak to it that i thought was pretty interesting especially for a movie this early and i think it's pretty spooky I, I, i'm a big fan uh support your local sheriff another really fun western comedy this one's from 1969 love the 60s I got a lot of 60s movies here um and it's starring james gardner as kind of a burnout who rolls into a town and he ends up taking a sheriff job just so he can earn some extra money to go on his way and he may be kind of a burnout and he may be not very motivated but he's the fastest guy in the west and he earns a lot of respect there and it's really funny it's a really good time uh, 10 Seconds to Hell. I've never seen this movie. I believe this one was a gift, but it's got Jack Palance in it, so that could be interesting. Uh, oh, it is a Hammer movie. Very interesting. Okay, so I need to check that out. I don't know anything about it. Uh, oh, They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Recommended by my friend Matt Bledsoe from the Film Feast podcast. Uh, this has got Jane Fonda, doesn't it? Yeah, Jane Fonda. It's, it's, it's 60s. I really like a 60s Jane Fonda movie. I've heard it's really interesting. Pretty sad, but that's okay. I'll watch a sad movie. Truck Turner, maybe my favorite black exploitation movie of all time. This movie is just blissful fun. It's got kick-ass action. It's got an amazing 1970s soundtrack um, sung by the lead actor Isaac Hayes, and it's yeah, starring him. It's got Yafet Koto as the villain. It's got, oh, it's got Nichelle Nichols in it from Star Trek, doesn't it? It doesn't have her name on the back, but I'm pretty sure she's in it. Uh, I love this movie. It's, a, it's an amazing time. Twice Told Tales, an anthology with Vincent Price. Uh, most people know Tales of Terror, which are Edgar Allan Poe stories. This one's a little bit less known. It's uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne stories. And I actually like this movie a little bit better. It's got an amazing telling of uh, The House of Seven Gables, which I've never actually read. I don't know how faithful it is, but um, it's a really great horror anthology segment. So it's got three great segments. It's a little bit long. It's it's two hours, which is long for a Vincent Price movie. They're normally about 90 minutes, but I think uh, the journey is worth it for sure. Okay, so we're nearing the end. The Undying Monster. This is, it looks to be a Wolfman knockoff. It's from 1942, just the year after the Wolfman came out. This werewolf here looks just like the Wolfman. So it is a werewolf movie. But there's very little werewolfing in the movie. It's a little bit disappointing if that's what you go in expecting. It's, I don't even know how to sugarcoat it. I don't think it's very good, but it's kind of an interesting thing to have. It's a Wolfman knockoff from just after that came out. I don't know. I own it. War Gods of the Deep. Uh, not good. It's a Vincent Price movie. It should be awesome because it's about like ancient gods deep below the sea and, and Vincent Price is living below the sea in this big facility. And it sounds like it'd be the greatest movie ever made. 
It's pretty boring. Not very good. That's a disappointment. Uh, what a way to go. Not a disappointment. This is a 1960s comedy starring Shirley MacLaine and, all right, get a load of the rest of this cast. Paul Newman, Robert Mitchum, Dean Martin, Gene Kelly, Bob Cummings, and Dick Van Dyke. And it's basically about Shirley MacLaine wants to live a simple life with a husband she loves. And every time she marries a guy, he gets super ambitious and it kills him. So she has all these dead husbands all throughout the movie. It's really weird and wild. And I love it. Highly recommend it. Okay, What's So Bad About Feeling Good, another 60s comedy. This one's from 1968, starring Mary Tyler Moore and uh, George Pappard, who I talked about towards the beginning of this video. Uh, yeah, you might think that Mary Tyler Moore is like a queen of 1960s comedy cinema, and she's not because she was more a TV star. There are not a lot of movies from this era that she stars in. This is a rare one. And it's a weird movie to watch after the last couple of years that the world has been dealing with because it's about a pandemic, but the sickness is it makes you really, really happy. <laughs> That's what the sickness is in this movie. So you got all these people walking around wearing masks, hoping not to get the sickness. And you got Mary Tyler Moore and George Papard who have the sickness. So they're super happy. They're having a great time and they're going around trying to infect everyone. So it's weird to watch in 2022, but it is blissful entertainment. I think it's super, super fun. All right, we're in the end game now. The final three Blu-rays. White Lightning, another Burt Reynolds movie. I've been trying to buy a lot of Burt Reynolds movies. I really like him as a movie star. I haven't watched this yet, but it's it's some kind of a car racing crime uh, down south kind of movie. Sounds like a really good time, but I haven't watched it quite yet. Then Witness for the Prosecution, a Billy Wilder courtroom drama. Maybe my personal favorite courtroom drama. This movie has so many twists that blew my mind. And it's starring Tyrone Power, Marlene Diedrich, and Charles Lawton. Awesome cast. Final movie. Uh, oh, we're ending on disappointment. Uh, the Woman in the Window. Not a disappointment because of the movie, because I've never seen it. But it is starring Fritz Lang. It's starring... Uh, sorry, it's directed by Fritz Lang. It's starring Edward G. Robinson. And I've heard great things about it. Uh, but it is still in the plastic, so I need to check it out. So that is my complete Kino Lorber collection. Here's a stack for your viewing pleasure. Uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg, as you know, from watching this whole video. Um, so that's my whole collection. Let me know uh, what movies do you think uh, that you really love in there. Uh, maybe tell me what movies I haven't watched yet that you think I should. And if there are any Kino Lorber movies I don't have that you think are really amazing, let me know in the comments below. Let's talk about Kino Lorber movies. Let's talk about all kinds of movies. Uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Epler Daniel. And uh, yeah. We'll talk about more movies next time. See you then.